Hi, and welcome to the webisode, Mr. Wilson Teaches Graffiti Tags. Today I'm going to bring you through the processes of making a graffiti tag using a website called graffiticreator.net as well as Temper Cake Paint. The first step in creating your graffiti tag is to create a background. And for this you can use any color. And for this project I'm using just gray paint, but you can also switch the colors or create whatever brick color you'd like. Um, just using a regular sponge, all you have to do is paint the acrylic or temper paint on. And you don't want it to be completely saturated, so if you have to wipe off the side, get rid of it, some of it. That usually leaves just the right amount so that the light is barely shining off of it. And when you do your brick pattern, you're going to start by leaving a little bit of the edge and pushing it down. And you don't want to push down too hard, or you're going to end up getting a complete rectangle, and we want to leave those textured areas from the sponge. And the next one you're going to place it next to, but just slide a little over. So there's that little space between. And once we start to get the sponge saturated here, we're going to be able to get more than one print out of each paint. And at some point, you're going to end up going off the paper, which is fine. That's why we have another paper underneath to protect the table. And you want it to trail right off the page. Um, the next placement of your brick is the tricky one. And you want to make sure that you're going to overlap the bricks. And this is what makes a structurally sound building. So you don't want to put it right underneath, you want to offset it so that it's about halfway between your next set. And then we're going to go back through and make sure we get that area that we just missed. And if you did this correctly, it should pretty much bring you right to the edge of the paper since they're just a mirror image of each other. And then we're going to move on to the third row. And if you mess up, it's not the end of the world. Remember, this is just a background. And really, the attention is just going to be drawn onto the letters or the graffiti that you're adding to it. So as long as you're getting something remotely close to this, I wouldn't be too concerned with it. And it does look pretty nice, too, if you switch the brick colors, almost if it, is, if it were a real building, where they're not too concerned with exactly the color of the brick unless you're doing a certain pattern. And you can see I'm able to pull out a lot more bricks now that my sponge is pretty soaked with paint. And you can also dip this in too if you don't have a paintbrush. And all these bricks are going to be going off the page just because of the size of the paper that I chose. And, one more. and then this is going to dry. And once it's dry, we can start drawing on the letters. Um, so while this is happening is when I go online and I start to look up the image and using the computer program that you'll see in the next step. So the next step for the process is you're going to go online and you're going to go to a website called Graffiti Creator and that's G-R-A-F-F-I-T-I-C-R-E-A-T-O-R dot net and this is a free software program where you can actually use Adobe Flash to create graffiti and they have tons of fonts and a lot of interesting things um, on that website so I'd suggest going on there and sort of messing around with it and getting accustomed to it. Uh, the screen, this is a screen capture of the font Chrome 5 you can see this is where you type in create. You can change things like the width, the height, the rotation. You've got your colors you can choose from and also adjust using the tabs. And then each of these boxes here tells you um, what you're going to have your fill, your sunset. You can also click on the actual letters and only work on one letter at a time if you want to make some different too. So this is a quick one I did that's just um, Chrome 5 lettering with a blue fill and a green sunset and white stripes added on. And that's what I'm going to try to mimic uh, in my actual painting. So I tell my students whatever design you do on the computer, that's the design phase, and then you're going to try to transfer it over. Um, so be careful not to overwhelm the letters with too much, unless you have the capability of actually transferring that over. And what I've started doing is taking this font and freehanding it over here. And this is something that a lot of students find rather difficult, especially because you're enlarging. So it might take a couple tries. Um, you can do it first on paper and then trace it over, or if you want to... Um, find a way where you can enlarge it. So if you have an overhead projector, if you have stencils, um, there's tons of methods you can do to try to transfer this over without freehanding it. But really the easiest way is just taking a white charcoal pencil that'll show up on the paper and going onto it and sketching out each of the lines. And it really depends on which font you pick and that declares how easy it is. So I'm transferring over the end. And then you get ready to 
to begin your paint. And the charcoal does erase if you mess up so you can go through. And a lot of this, remember, is gonna get covered with paint. And then that'll take us to the next step, which is the painting. Um, the paint you're gonna be using is temper cakes. And these are basically just concentrate color. They are activated with water. Sort of like watercolors, but it's an actual tempera. And you need to have your water and paint brushes ready. I'm using two different size paint brushes, um, one for the fill and one for the outline. And depending on what your design is, you might have a couple other handy as well. And these work just by activating them with the water. And they do take quite a few laps to get the right pigment to come out of it. So I'm using the blue first. And my design, like I showed um, from the graffitiecreator.net, has a blue fill with a green fade from the bottom. So I'm going to start by putting in the blue. And some of the colors, depending on what you pick, some of them will be a little see-through or transparent, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because a lot of spray paint that you see on graffiti. Okay, so I've jumped ahead a little here so I can show you that the color is starting to dry. And you can see the difference in the shade from the lighter blue to the dark blue. And the next thing I'm going to show you is how to create a shadow. And it's pretty simple if you flip your paper. I'm going to be turning my paper so it's facing upward. I'm going to pretend almost like it's snowing. And when it snows, it collects on the top of things like tree branches on your roof. So as it snows, I know snow is going to collect on each of the top areas and within some of these pockets. So I'm creating a thicker line. I'm using the bigger brush for this. On top of these areas where I know snow would land. And I don't just stop with the one edge. I know that I'm going to have snow here. If snow were to hit this area, it would fall on each of these angles. I'm going to create each of those little shelves. And then if you were to flip it back over, and now it looks like a shadow is being created by the sunlight coming from this way, having the shadow on the opposite side. Um, you can also do the same thing for the highlights. So let's say I wanted to add a highlight in. I'm gonna use a gray color. Um, I would flip it back over, think about where my snow would hit, and then just move my finger in, my paintbrush, and create A space. Um, this highlight effect is used a lot in graffiti. Almost makes it look like it's plastic wrapped. And I'm leaving that space there so it falls on the letter. And that's going to make that letter jump out a lot more. Um, some other examples of things you could do are add on your stripes, your dots. Uh, if you want your area to have splatter, you can also take some of your black and leave globs of it, so some runnery, runny, watery areas. And then using a straw, you can actually bend this and shoot the watery black out. What that does is it gives it almost like a spray paint effect um, as it shines down. So some other examples, different lettering. So here's a W. I've done the same colors, uh, or same scheme, just using different colors. Um, here's one that I've now added in the stripes, or the dots. Here's an M that's done in different colors, as well as stripes with dots. So there's tons of different effects you can do, just a matter of what your actual design is. And you'll notice this one has a different background too. So really the color scheme is up to you. And for the final project, you should have all your letters um, that are, um, might be a glare on that, Let's see if I can hold it better. Uh, you're going to have a fully done graffiti tag. I like to do them all matching, but it's really up to you what you want the letters to be. And this one follows both my fill sunrise color and the stripe scheme that I added. And then on this one, I did my shadows down. So that means I flipped my paper up like this when I painted the black. And I also did the highlights coming from a different direction. So I changed the direction of both of them, which you can do just by flipping your paper around. And so there's tons of different options and it's up to you. So best of luck.